I mean, from our, from our discussions with finance directors and finance teams, I think top, top of their entry and quite rightly, in, in my view, I would say that as a banker, is still liquidity, um, ensuring the firm has sufficient liquidity um, and whether that be, um, you know, it can involve securing new financing through their bank as well. So and that's not just to survive the, the, the current crisis, but actually to come, when we come out of it, to actually sort of thrive as a business. Um, and in that West, you know, I'm sure, sure it's the same, but other banks will be very, very busy trying to support our customers through, through the crisis. And just to give a, give a little feel for some of the numbers, in that West, we've, we, we've lent over five and a half billion pounds worth of, of, of loans under the, the various government backed schemes, which has been great. Um, provided 6,000 new overdrafts to firms, and I think over nearly 50,000 capital repayment holidays. So, been pretty active. And in, in, in the profs, the, the kind of profs market, I guess across the mid market and the larger corporates, they were they were very quick out of, out of, out of the blocks in terms of approaching their banks, quite often multi banks. Um, for for kind of additional liquidity top ups, and usually that's a, a short term increase to their revolving credit facility. Not necessarily because they needed the funds there and then, but actually partners preferred operating with that additional degree of liquidity buffer. And across the the more of the kind of commercial space, we've seen quite a high volume of of C builds, the the coronavirus business interruption loan scheme facilities, and I think that's partly. Partly driven by the, the the partnership model, as we know, and it doesn't lend itself naturally to retention of value and cash in the business. So, so we have been pretty um, pretty active, and of course, we've seen firms avail themselves of other government support, whether that be furloughing um, staff or, or deferring tax into next year. Talking talking to FDs, I think there's a growing sense that we're in a bit of a false storm right now, and there is a bit of nervousness around. The impact later this year when when perhaps furloughing ends and a fixed cost base gets switched back on um, perhaps the, the the recovery isn't quite as sharp as we originally expected um, and of course we've got a looming tax bill early next year there is a sense that in q4 and q1 um, it's quite a dangerous time um, so you know i would say and i would say this is frankly keep very very sharp focus on cash flow Engage with your relationship manager, whether that's NatWest or another bank, um, as early in that process as possible. What, what else are they focusing on? Um, it definitely goes beyond liquidity now, okay? So, um, you know, new business, um, how, how firms actually, um, you know, kind of engage, do new business, client management in these very different times. It's probably more important than ever. To, to do that, to actually ensure your profile is out there, you're keeping in touch with your key customers, um, your, your target names, your, um, your key contacts. And there are different ways um, to do that. It's not easy and there are experts and I think Richard mentioned someone's coming on at another time to talk about that. So there are firms out there that can share, share best practice. Um, well-being, um, you know, I mean, finance, finance, uh, directors need to ensure the physical and, and mental well-being of their teams um, is, is being very, very well looked after. Um, clear leadership at the moment in that area is, is critical as we come out of not just the sort of chaos stage, which we're, it sort of feels like we're, we're coming out of now, but to the sort of new normal, it still remains very relevant. And a lot of a lot of finance directors we're finding are really just taking this taking this moment to to reflect, to actually reflect and think forward in terms of right, what are the what are the longer term impact and implications from COVID nineteen on the firm, and that might be through um, through flexible working. Okay, we've seen the the sector um, transition pretty pretty well to, to working from home, but what does that mean longer term? Will 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 partners and fee owners return to the office? What are the implications in terms of commercial real estate? Do employees have the right level of um, tech? What does that mean in terms of tech investments? We see new ways of doing, doing business and keeping the show on the road, whether that's um, kind of virtual court hearings or it might be remote audits or even the use of drones um, undertaking stock counting. It's been really, really interesting to see. So how will that continue to evolve going forward? And of course, the kind of the, the, the point we often go to is, is 
will, will this trigger an acceleration of digitization? So automation and AI, will we finally see that, um, you know, kind of adopted en masse within the sector? Or actually, will we just see a, a move to kind of where a lot of other sectors are now using Zoom technology? Um, will we really see a sort of a, a catalyst for fundamental change? And as a bank, you know, we're, we're just alive to some of those discussions and thoughts and just being kind of cognizant of how we might better support on that, on that journey. Um, so yes, Richard, I mean, um, you know, the, the, the role of the finance team is, is definitely, definitely changing um, and it's very much moving outside of, the, um, of their traditional finance roles.